Now you may wonder if there were any sports packages available outside of Japan, and the short answer is no. However, the long answer is that some parts of the sports package were made available as standard items or as optional upgrades. Welcome to another Bump by video and my name is Art. With its 1980 sharp lines, the 86 is already a very good looking car from the factory. Some people like to go one step further and then dress it up with a J-Blood or run free body kit. You can even complement that with a TRD ducktail spoiler. And these body kits and spoilers are an evolution of the optional factory 86 sports package. This package changed over the years many many times, but mainly consisted out of a set of spoilers and side skirts. So what was this package? When did it become available and how did this change over time? What did it cost? Why wasn't it available outside of Japan? And why are these parts still sold after today and fetch insane prices? Join me in this video down the 86 rabbit hole and learn everything I know about the factory sports package. When both the Levin and Trano 86 were introduced in 1983, there was no sports package available. There wasn't even a single spoiler included in the dealer accessories. In the Levin and Trano brochures at launch, they both lacked the sports package that was present in later brochures. The sports package only became available in August, September 1983, and that's when the brochure was adjusted. At first, the Levin and Trano brochures received only a subtle update, and those changes were hardly noticeable. But place them side by side, and you will notice that they actually have changed quite a lot. The Levin got cold striping on the grille, the door mirrors are more streamlined, the alloy wheels have changed, and yes, there are front and rear spoilers. And the same applies, obviously, to the Trano brochure. In August 1984, the Levin brochure received a second revamp and it was dressed up more seriously like a Trano brochure with a roomy go doing workouts. First much you can call doing workouts being more serious than jumping into a pool. The sports package was initially only available on the GTA packs, the 3-door GT Fee and the 2-door GT trim levels. It featured artificial leather steering wheel, genuine leather wrapped gear shift knob and a front and rear spoiler. The front spoiler actually is an air dam, a front lip or a front splitter, but we'll call it a spoiler as that's how almost all Toyota brochures call it. The rear spoiler adds weight, so stiffer springs and dampers were installed on the hatch and boot lid of the models that features these. Shortly after the sports package became available, a set of the famous side skirts were added to the package. As the side skirts are mounted over the inner fenders, the front mud flaps won't fit anymore. And this is why cars with the sports package only have rear mud flaps. After the facelift arrived in May 1985, the new front bumper received an integrated air dam, so the separate front spoiler is no longer offered. The new options in the package were blue colored door mirror glass and yellow halogen headlamps. The sports package was now extended to the SR trim level, and this also meant that new parts had to be added to the package. The mud flaps were previously standard on the GT Apex, SR and SE trim levels, but now they became optional for the GTV and GT trim levels. The GT Apex was already pretty much spec'd out as it featured the mud flaps, the leather wrapped steering wheel, leather gear shift knob, and velour sports seats by default. The pre-facelift package on the GT Apex already included a rear spoiler, side skirts, so the new package only added yellow halogen headlamps. The GT and the GTV trim levels were more basic. For instance, by default, only the GTV featured the sport seats. The pre-facelift already featured the side skirts, the fake leather wrapped steering wheel, and a leather gear shift knob. The new package added then yellow halogen headlamps and blue colored door mirror glass. The SR trim level by itself lacked almost all luxury, so the new SR sports package added the rear spoiler, mud flaps, yellow halogen headlamps, blue colored door mirror glass, artificial leather wrapped steering wheel, genuine leather wrapped gear shift knob, alloy wheels, and the same sports seats as found on the GDV. 
If you paid close attention, you would also have noticed that side skirts were not available on the SR trim level. This also meant that the SR Sports package featured mud flaps both front and rear, while all the others didn't. There's one more honorable mention here, the Toyota Sprinter Trano Black Limited. It featured the sports package by default, and yes, the Black Limited really was the ultimate trim level to begin with, and no option was spared. Apart from the Black Limited gold and amber theme, there was no significant difference between the GT Apex sports package and the Black Limited sports package. Now you may wonder if there were any sports packages available outside of Japan, and the short answer is no, there were no sports packages available outside of Japan. At least if you ignore the aftermarket German Hasselback trim that became a dealer option in Germany. However, the long answer is that some parts of the sports package were made available as standard items or as optional upgrades. The United States and Canadian 8.6s featured various options. The mud flaps were already standard on the GTS trim level and available as an option on the SR5 trim level. The pre-facelift GTS featured a front spoiler standard and a trunk spoiler as optional. This front spoiler isn't the same as the Japanese though. It's not a separate part but actually an integral part of the entire front bumper assembly. With the facelift kicking in only months after the launch, the front spoiler remained standard on the GTS. And strangely enough, the facelift the GTS lacked the rear spoiler as an option, and it doesn't appear to be present in the press photos and brochures either. The Australian Corolla Sprinter can best be described as the SR5 from the US and Canada with a leaven body on top of it. Australia was one of the first countries to sell the 8.6 right from the launch date in May 1983. Unfortunately, this also meant that the Sprinter 8.6 didn't get any of the items in the sports package with the first batch. The Sprinter was for sale until August 1985, and there are no records that indicate spoilers or side skirts were added after August 1983. The European countries that sold the 8.6 in no particular order are UK, Ireland, France, Portugal, Greece, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Austria, Switzerland and the Canary Islands. As the European countries imported their 8.6s separately, there were a couple of differences between them. I'll name these separately, but right here I'll just discuss what they all had in common. In general, most of the European countries started selling the Corolla GT or GTI Coupe after August 1983, and thus got the front and rear spoiler included in the package. These two spoilers are the exact same as the ones available for the Japanese 11. I have seen a few European pre-facelift Panda 8.6s with side skirts, but there is no documentation to back that these pre-facelift models received side skirts. In some countries, mud flaps were available as standard or option. After the facelift arrived in August 1985, the side skirts got included in some of the countries, but not all of them. What's also new is the inclusion of a separate front spoiler that differs from the pre-facelift front spoiler. This front spoiler is unique to Europe and wasn't available in Japan or anywhere else in the world. In Germany, the two-door Corolla GT was launched in November 1983 and was sold similar to the two-door Japanese GT Apex, but only included the front spoiler. Maybe this was done to increase the sales on the Hasselback trim that was sold as a dealer option. This trim included a different front bumper and a rear spoiler and also different side skirts. Only after the facelift, Toyota Germany added the rear spoiler and side skirts to the standard trim and now the new front spoiler was also included as well. At the launch in June 1983 in the Netherlands, Belgium and Finland, there was no front spoiler available. Somewhere in July or August the front spoiler was added to the standard trim, but already some of the dealers stocked up their cars without a front spoiler. Just like in Germany, the rear spoiler was missing on these two-door models. After the facelift also the rear spoiler, side skirts and the separate front lip were included.
Switzerland is another special case. From August 1983 onwards, the Corolla SR Coupe was sold. This car was equal to the Australian Sprinter SR, with the difference that it also included the sports package front and rear spoiler. In February 1985, the Corolla SR Coupe was replaced by the pre-facelift Corolla Coupe GTI, and it included the front spoiler and the rear spoiler. The Hasselback trim was optional and included side skirts. The facelifted GTI arrived during the summer of 1985, and only included the sports package, rear spoiler and the new European front spoiler. The three-door 86 was also sold on the Canary Islands, Sweden, Denmark, Portugal and Greece. I have no documentation from these countries, so it's impossible for me to say for certain that these countries also included the same front spoiler, rear spoiler and side skirts of the sports package. I did find photos of Portuguese cars, including the new front lid, so my best guess is that they actually did. It's also difficult to tell what items featured on the cars that were sold in other countries than the ones that I named before, as those were really low sales volumes. The infamous Japanese sports package was really a strange option to begin with. You had to order it before manufacturing of your 86 began, just like the type of alloy wheels, sunroof or power windows. In Japan there were also dealer installed options like air conditioning, cassette radios, child seats and sunroof wind deflectors. It's unknown why the sports package wasn't just part of the dealer options and accessories to begin with. Some of the parts in the sports package are still sought after today and many of the original parts have been replaced by aftermarket body kits or were damaged beyond repair. Finding original undamaged side skirts is for instance very challenging. Also some countries like the USA and Canada didn't get these parts, so they tend to import them in large numbers, which then drives up the prices in Japan. Finally, the pre-facelift front lip of the Levin and Torano are being used on post-facelift models to give it a more pronounced lip. This means that these lips are getting scarce and that also increases prices. Luckily, many aftermarket bumpers like the J-Blood Front Spoiler Type 2 includes this lip. Now the big question you might have right now is how much did this sports package cost you when you bought your 86 new? I have found a lot of Japanese price lists online and I own 4 of them myself. Out of all these price lists, I could only find 2 of them that mentioned the sports package as an option. In both cases, the sports package was an option that was already included in the sales price of the car. Does this mean that this package was free of charge? Or even worse, that some of the owners actually chose not to install it? That's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this in-depth video about the 86 sports package. And more videos are coming up, and maybe next time I'll take a closer look at Itsuki's 11 and highlight everything that's wrong with it. Until then, stay safe and thank you for watching. Pump it, girl. All right.